one in three teenage girls are likely to become pregnant before the age of 20. Ninety-six percent of young men will have sex before marriage. By age 18, six out of ten teenage women have had sexual intercourse. I don't remember um, having a conversation about sex with my mom. I think she pretty much came and told me little bits. I grew up in the era where uh, mothers didn't talk about, or my mom, and they were pretty much hush-hush about it. That My uh, conversation with my mom about sex was just don't have it. So that was something I had to learn the hard way. Um, by the neighborhood children and going to schools, it's different in different households. So I learned pretty much a lot about sex. Um, in school from other kids. It wasn't from my parents. Uh, it was Catholic school. And I remember them bringing us into a room and uh, the girls were separated from the boys. And then we saw a film, which was an animated film. And then we were told afterwards if we had any questions to go ahead and ask the nuns. So it was, I wouldn't say it was probably a clear explanation of uh, what sex was. It was kind of more of a watered down explanation. I can't really remember. It's as if I, I, you know, pretty much knew from the start. Um, for me, I think one of the, the major sources of information, even as, as a young child, was uh, getting my hands on men's magazines. I think the first time I learned I was in fifth grade in grammar school and we uh, had a girls only uh, session in the, in the uh, cafeteria where we learned about menstruation. And I think they started talking about um, sex at that time, but very briefly. I think the first time I heard about sex, uh, I was going through my brother's green bag in his room. He had some uh, not so nice magazines so I was sneaking in his room and and look at the magazines and then try to put them back where I found them and my mom she had books uh, that she was hiding from us so I would always want to know what was in the books so I was reading the books so my parents really didn't talk to us about sex per se my father is still a little uncomfortable today sitting in the room with me watching a television show and you know someone's kissing there was no education back in the 50s and 60s as far as sex, and there was really no father-son talks. Um, it, it, the puritanical beliefs about sexuality and procreation has interfered throughout the world, and we have become exalted and we don't really understand our basic nature as animal. And in the 50s and 60s, sex was taboo. It was something done in the dark behind closed doors. And I thought that was kind of silly too, but you know, I was just a kid, what did I know? I think for myself, uh, the first time I had my period, my mother gave me the book. And the book was, you know, whatever, what young ladies should know about. And that's where I remember reading it over and over uh, about, you know, sex and, um, you know, the male and female's role in that process. I went to a Catholic school, and so the education I got before then was very uh, vague. And I remember a physician standing up in front of the class. We were probably... 10 or 11 and the whole time he was rubbing his ears as he was talking about what's how what makes men and women different so i didn't get much from that but it was really the book which was the aha moment this is how it really you know it works i would say probably in sixth grade um, my mother was an emergency room nurse and she did talk about sex uh, on a regular basis with 
I would say the things she talked about sex were mostly uh, not getting pregnant. Um, I actually, I think I was in third grade and I actually was going through my mom and dad's bathroom and I found magazines there and I started reading this magazine and it started telling me like all these like stuff about it. Just in fifth grade I first learned about it. Um, they had a teacher come in and they separated the girls and the boys. And then in seventh grade they taught more about it, more in depth. And they didn't really say much in sixth grade. It was just mostly in seventh grade. And then in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, we kind of went more in-depth. And then also, as a junior or a senior in high school, you go really in-depth in it. Okay. Uh, one day, um, I was sick, so I stayed home from school. And my dad, I had to go to his job, and he's a merchandiser. So... Um, when we were in the car, it was quiet, and he asked me, like, how much you know about sex? And I'm like, not much. And he's, so he says, so he starts to tell me the basics and everything. Like, he told me that, uh, wait, uh, he told me, well, the, Oh, wow. Well, um, I remember I was in the, going to the sixth grade, and um, we had to get a paper signed about uh, sex education. Uh, and I, I was like, oh, my goodness, let me ask my mom. <laughs> and my mom was like, well, what are they teaching you this stuff for anyway? But she, you know, she told me just to be a little, you know, go ahead and do it. But she told me heads on, like, probably when I was in fourth or fifth grade. That's when I remember it. <laughs> um, the first time I remember was in the fourth grade. And um, basically they were uh, talking to us about um, different stuff like uh, like what to do. Uh, well, not what to do, but like if you were ever to encounter different um, types of like sexual things, uh, they taught us like how to avoid that, and uh, that's really, like it can give you different types of diseases, so that's all I remember. The first time was about, I was about nine or ten years old, and we first, we just moved in with my stepdad, and it was probably around midnight, and I walked into the, the bedroom, when I shouldn't have, and he was looking at some stuff, and I asked him about it, and he told me about everything I needed to know about it, and he's been giving me information throughout the years, and he still gives me information today. Um, the very first time I thought about sex, I guess, was when I was at a hockey camp during the summer, and some of the older boys were actually telling me and some of my friends about it, and I just thought it was outrageous. Well, it surprises most people, but it was actually in fifth grade because we were, I went to a private Jewish day school for elementary school, and they showed us this really weird, like, sex ed video, and all the parents were a fuss because it was fifth grade, it's way too young to be showing our children videos about sex, and I mean, obviously they already knew what it was, but they showed us this really awkward sex ed video, and you know, it was fifth grade, so every time they said a word that had anything to do with sex, all the boys were like, hee, and you know, all the girls were like, this is so awkward. <laughs> but I suppose that was the first sort of educational setting that I learned about it. I think that I tried to be much more open with my children uh, in talking about sex when they were very little. Um, we named body parts. We didn't have made up names for body parts. I spoke about them with the accurate names. Um, I vividly remember them uh, asking me about sex and babies and they were pretty young. 
and um, I spoke very openly about it. And it's interesting because as they've gotten older, they're in high school now and they're seniors, um, we don't talk about it so much now, but they had a lot more education in high school and we talked about it at that time. But I think, I think that um, it made me try to be much more open with them than my family was, what my parents were with me. I never had a conversation with my dad at all about sex, ever. When do you remember the first time you talked to your mom about sex? See, that's a very interesting question because I'm not sure that we ever sat down and had like the birds and the bees talk. Um, I know that my brother and my dad did this one time they went on a road trip to Orlando and they just spent the whole time talking about that, which I personally do not envy. But I'm, I'm not sure that we ever like sat down at the table and she went, Rachel, I want to talk to you about sex. I think she, I mean, I'd like to think of myself as a pretty intelligent person. I think she knew that I knew enough <laughs> and, you know, and that I had been in like sex education in, in seventh grade and middle school and, and stuff like that and that I was intelligent enough not to make like stupid decisions and that I knew sort of enough to not pretty much I already knew what she was gonna say. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to talk to your kids about because you know your kids don't necessarily want to talk to you about it. When when they get to an age where they're old enough to really understand it my kids didn't particularly want to talk about it. Um, and their health class gave us a forum um, from which to talk about it. But, you know, now they certainly wouldn't want to have a conversation, I don't think, with me about it. I think that some of my peers have some sort of misconceptions about it, either about sort of like the likelihood of pregnancy or getting STDs or um, protection. I mean, I know I have a lot of friends that are sexually active. I'm not, but I know that I have a lot of friends that are. And I guess the ones that are, there's sort of a different range. Like there's, one of them is, she's very intelligent. She, you know, knows what she's doing. It's just a choice that she made, but she's not stupid about it. And another one's kind of a little looser about it. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Well, I think that my children are, um very aware of the consequences of um, sex in terms of um, AIDS and STDs. Um, I think that also my children, as it turns out, have um, not been involved in um, intimate relationships in high school um, with one person. Um, or in fact even, you know, particularly dated at length. So, you know, my perspective um, is different today than it would be had either of them had, you know, in a, a, a very special relationship. But um, I think that the conversation is that sex is a, you know, a wonderful thing, but it's also not something just to be had, uh, you know, willy-nilly. What do you think keeps parents from talking to their teens about sex? It is awkward. Oh my goodness, it is so awkward. And I think that a lot of, this is coming from an AP psychology student, <laughs> I think a lot of parents are sort of worried that it's gonna, it might affect their relationship with their teenager in a negative way. Like, I know that teenager parent relationships are fragile. You know, teenager in a bad mood, parents in a bad mood, you know, that's just the way it is. So I don't think, I just think parents don't want to do anything to sort of rock the boat any more than the boat is already rocking. <laughs>
uh, I kept on going with it. And you know, sometimes some of my family members tell me I'm a little too open with him, but I don't think it's anything different than what he hears at school. You know, because I have nieces and nephews, and they told me that there's not too much I can really say to my son about sex that he hadn't already heard. I mean, they started hearing things when they went to third grade. So, and then being a former educator, I, I, I'm very open with him. Who would you say you talk to the most about sex? Really? Really no one, really. I mean, it depends. Like, um, the person I might talk to the most would probably be my mom or my grandmother. So, because I don't really talk to my friends about it. Do you know much about what he learns about in school, about sex ed? He's not learning anything right now because it stops after the ninth grade. So then it becomes an option if you want to do it. Um, a lot of things that he gets, he already knows. You know, even when he was a small child, I never made up names for body parts. I called it the correct name. He always knew what it was. So I think when he started taking sex ed in fourth grade, he already knew a lot of the things because, you know, I, I have been very open with him just because it wasn't taught to me. Everything I learned, I had to either learn either from my friends because they were, you know, they didn't know what they were talking about, you know, and um, reading magazines and looking at TV and, you know, sneaking. To look at things on TV, so I'm, I'm I'm open with him. I don't, you know, as far as his friends are concerned, I'm sure they have their interpretation as to what sex is and how you're supposed to go about it. And every day, I'm just trying to combat whatever it is his friends are telling him because they really don't know either. I think they could basically um, have it more. Uh, during like for the 11th and 12th grade and 10th grade days like all year I think you should have to take it all year because they're still like after that freshman year people are gonna be like oh well they might forget it or whatever and that 11th and 12th grade year they might just go ahead and do it anyway because on half days I know a lot of people go and do it with their girlfriend on half days so I'm talking to him about abstinence you know waiting until he gets married, that's what I would really like for him to do. But if he's not going to wait, at least be an adult. Be able to take care of the you know, consequences that come with it. Because I tell him that's an adult action, and there are adult consequences that come with it. And, you know, I'm not having any more babies. He doesn't need to bring any babies to me because I'm not going to take care of them. You know, I, will, I have two more years, and in two years... It's going to be about things that I want to do, not taking care of a little baby. You know, that, that's, not, that's not my plan at all. So hopefully he will listen. We even went through a purity ceremony at the church, uh, and I bought him two rings, a ring for both hands. You know, so it's a symbol. So I always tell him, when you happen, if you happen to get into a situation and it gets a little heated, stop, bag away from the girl take some deep breaths and then come and talk to me because you know we can we can talk about whatever it is you know I'm just hoping that he doesn't listen to his friends when they tell him he can go to a convenience store and buy condoms like you're, you're too young I don't you can't buy condoms so but I don't want to buy him condoms either because my brother tells me I need to buy him condoms I'm saying well I'm telling him not to have sex why would I then go out and buy condoms that makes no sense um I want to tell people that um, if they do it, then they just have to live up to the consequences that come with it. And um, it's like, it would be really hard to struggle with uh, school. Uh, and if they play sports, you got school sports and have to take, a, take care of like two other people, your girlfriend and the baby. self-image and our own self-confidence affects how we teach others and how we transmit data to our offspring. 
And if you don't have the maturity, you can't teach well because you're teaching your own biases and your own prejudice and you're teaching your own handicaps and it's passed down from generation to generation. You usually learn about sex when you talk to your parents. That's like the talk. You have the talk to your parents where you talk about sex and how it works and basic details. You don't only talk to your peers unless you're boosting about it, but it's not even true. They just do it just to say they did it. So do you think kids your age get, get good information from each other or not? No, because you never know if it's true or not. I would think that my stepdad, if he normally approaches us about it, and he'll just ask us to talk one day and we'll just go in talk about our problems and stuff and he'll talk about it. We don't, sometimes I'll go ask him like a question and he'll just give me the answer and maybe some more information. But normally he's a, he approaches us. Get over your own embarrassment. Sex is a natural thing and it's not just my age when I was in the military at 19 and 20, I had the same philosophy because I also saw the detriment. Sex is such a product of society that the Viet Cong would use their own brothels and they would infect the American soldiers with venereal disease. It can be used as a tool, it can be used as a weapon, it can be used to manipulate. Understand where sex comes from don't make it something mystical. It can be special or it can be common everyday thing. It depends on your relationship with the person that you're with. So get over the mythology. Deal with reality. We are animal. We have the same drives. Not learned much at all about sex at school. The only time I really remember it was in seventh grade and in ninth grade. They just went over the diseases and they told, told us it was bad. They didn't want us to do it. I'm guessing because of all the teenage pregnancies and stuff. But not learning much at all at school about it. Are there a lot of teenage pregnancies in your school? There, there's a good many. There was probably 10 or 15 people this year that were pregnant and had children in the 11th grade and 10th grade. And I remember in fifth grade there was a girl that was pregnant at my school. Well, they pretty much teach you not to do it. They they teach you that it's bad to have sex before you have a like marriage. I just don't think people talk to their parents much now, not age. You said that they talk to their friends more. What do you what do you hear them talking about? Everything. I mean, or what they've done. This girl got drunk and had it with that guy, and this guy did this with that girl, and they just go into detail. And there's a new story every week. <laughs>
uh, I think there's a focus on that. So I don't know if I could say they're doing bad. I think the main thing, uh, my trigger is knowing um, what my kid's doing, where they're going, who they're associating with, and really through that finding the right time to kind of, I call it just in time, when, it's, when you find the opportunity to discuss it. So it could always be done better. I think is it better than my parents' generation? Yes. I don't think kids like talking about it to their friends or to their parents. I feel that I'd be more likely to talk to my mom about it just because we don't really like sharing that sort of information with each other. It's more personal. So in your group of friends you don't talk about that sort of thing? No, we try to keep it to ourselves. We, It's not really a big thing in our group. My group doesn't do any of that. But we do sometimes hear rumors about so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, but people don't go and tell them like each other stuff intentionally. How common do you think um, sexual behavior is among your kids' peer groups? What do you think they're doing? I think it's relatively common, and this is based in part on observation, but mostly on speculation. Uh, you know, you, you hear about the, the sexting and, and you know, you know uh, text messages and, and I gotta believe that, that my kids' peers aren't any different. Uh, and, and so yeah, it, it's really speculation. I don't have a lot of evidence. I haven't seen any, any activity. Um, but I'm speculating that it's, it's relatively common. When I told her about how there was a pregnant girl at my school, my mom just started telling me like how many sacrifices she'll have to make, how everyone's going to look at her differently, how boys are going to think of her differently, and even her parents don't respect her as much. And now when she later on tries to get a job, she'll always have the kids. So even if she's like 18 and trying to go to college or whatever, She'll always have to be thinking about, well, how am I going to provide for my kid? How am I going to be able to go to school and have a kid? You have a great quote. What is your quote that we're not like other parents, we love you? Oh, I, I love this quote. I tell my daughters that, uh, I, what I haven't said in a while, but basically, the, the more I love you, the stricter I am. The more any parent loves their kid, the stricter they are with their kid. And, and so... Uh, anytime I hear that uh, um, there's another parent that's not as strict as me, and you always hear that, well, John, so and so's uh, dad isn't that way, uh, that's when I always half jokingly say, well, that's because so and so's parents don't love them as much as I love you. And, uh, and it's true, you know, I say it in several other ways too. I say, I love you so much that it's okay by me, I, I will accept that you're mad at me. I will accept that you hate me for a couple weeks. What I will not accept is not doing my job as a parent. I will never accept that because I love you that much. And that's always been my message to the kids. It's hard. It's interesting because, you know, how she doesn't really can't respond. So we don't want to fall into the trap. It's okay to, you know, maybe let down our expectation because of peer pressure. So that's, that line seems to work well. Um, I think some people do. People who are closer to their parents are more likely to talk about it, and people who just distance themselves from their parents and don't talk about anything and lie to their parents a lot, they usually don't. But all the people I know seem to be really close to their parents and talk about everything with them. When I was a teen, uh, my mom and dad divorced early, so my mom was a single parent mom, so I really learned the hard way. Guys will always try to approach me, and, and with that, uh, you know, little boys are always seeking uh, sexual pleasures from girls, <laughs> and you have to know how to deal with it. So. I learned that way. I was always in school when we were growing up. Guys would just walk past you and kind of hit you on your behind area and things. And you have to fight, you know, like that. Like, keep your hands off of me. I'm a young lady. So when I was a teen, I learned a lot from 
going to church. We grew up in church a lot. So being around your own peers. And we would just talk about it. Who was active, who wasn't. And most of the time, everyone was more active than I was. I, I wasn't um, a sexually active teenager till later on. And I was peer pressured. Peer pressured. Wow. So I learned, you know, I learned by watching my friends. It seemed like they were more advanced than me. And um, I just had, I was raised to have respect for myself. And I loved myself and I loved my body. And I, I just didn't have that information that I felt like I was secure enough to have grown-up activities. That's what we were known. And it was thought it was a grown-up activity for marriage, for people who were in love. And I didn't feel like I had that. And so... I would just talk about it to see, you know, talk to my good friends when we were spending night. They would talk about, well, I kissed so-and-so and this, that, and the other. And I was like, oh, you know, I kissed. But far as it's going further, I didn't do that until uh, one of my best friends, bad, bad, bad. But we were uh, dating the same guy, and we I learned the hard way, trying to fit in and peer pressure. Yeah. How about thinking about all through your years of high school? How would you say, how common would you say it was at the beginning of high school as opposed to the end? And give me your thoughts. In the beginning, it was it wasn't that bad. When I first started in high school, when I was a freshman, it wasn't incoming freshman. It wasn't a big thing. Probably around junior, sophomore or junior year, it really it really got heavy in the percentages. It's probably about a half of my class. Basically, every class that I had, it was about seven periods. So half of my class was about seven periods. I could say were pretty much sexually active. Give me your thoughts on what you think changes between freshman year and as teens get older. I think it's really just trying to figure out who they are. And then some people, you know, have different things going on. And, you know, I just feel like maybe... It's that whole growing phase where in curiosity and you know, well everybody's doing it, you know, it's it's just one of those things. Um, freshman year they kinda look at you like you don't really know anything because you just came from middle school, but it's a fifty fifty percent chance that they do. They just curious and you know a lot of times they may not communicate with their parents about these feelings that they do have or maybe they just want to know sometimes they feel like if they experience it then they know more and that's not necessarily the case a lot of my daughter uh, teens come here to the salon to get their hair done and then I talk to a lot of them because they come they feel comfortable talking to me and so it's very common I mean we were just discussing in here yesterday the numbers of teenage uh, young girls who are just graduated last year with my daughter's class who are pregnant now. I mean, it's very, very common. Very common. It's, it's like drinking water. Yeah. And it, ha it comes with no responsibility. And then, um, you know, people get upset when they get pregnant and want to take action and, you know, want the whole world to be on their side. But the responsibility part with them when it came down to making that choice and that decision was effortless. It's just really common. It's like, like I said, it's like getting up in the morning, drinking a glass of water, taking a shower, sex, sex, you know, that's how it is. Yeah. Just know that you don't have to really conform to what people call peer pressure. You can always change and persuade other people just by them seeing how you, how you feel about things. It's all about how you carry yourself. You can anybody can follow somebody. Anybody can take someone else's morals and say that they're their own. It's all about how you feel as an individual. If you feel like, hey, this is something else I want to do, you know, go for it. Not saying just jump off bridges and off cars, but you know, always just always know that you're in control of yourself your emotions, your actions. And you don't have to be confined to what people think that you should be. Or just because you're hearing the latest gossip doesn't mean that you have to do it. So always be your own man and woman. That's how I see it. I feel that um, teenagers have hormones and teenagers uh, want to experience sex. And I feel like the media has uh, definitely promoted 
sexy lifestyle by buying sexy perfumes, sexy clothes. Um, a lot of the ads when I go uh, take my son shopping have a uh, limited clothing, kind of clothing optional on the teenagers. So um, I think it's very uh, prevalent that they're the, with the media influence that there are these a lot of teenagers are are sexually active and I think that they're curious I think it's normal actually well lately one of my friends um, he had he got into a little bit of trouble and he actually got his girlfriend pregnant so my parents were giving me a very serious lecture about how bad that is that you should be married before you actually decide to have a child and how it's not fair for the child and they've been giving me that lecture pretty much my entire life because they don't want me to make those mistakes so actually after the, my mom told me that if I was going to have sex that she wanted me wanted me to use a condom or other types of birth control so jokingly I actually put anal lube and a condom on the grocery list and my mom didn't think that was very funny. <laughs> Where do you think most teens get their information about sex and contraception STDs? I feel most teenagers get their information about sex and STDs from other teenagers. And that's why I was really proactive in the program that my son attended in our faith community because I knew the information was um, current and effective. and. I think that a lot of times these kids are telling each other information, but it might not be accurate information. So if they're going to talk about information, my only concern is that it's accurate information. Well, a lot of the information I get from my friends is usually just joking around or exaggerated events that um, we find funny, I guess, kind of comical. but. Um, most of the information isn't very serious, but if I think about it, I can get a serious idea and a serious perception as to what um, the topics actually are. So if you had a question about something, who would you go to and why? If I had a sexual question, I would probably go to one of my friends, like one of my closer friends because it, it's kind of, it makes me feel uncomfortable and I'm sure it makes a lot of people feel uncomfortable talking to whether it's your parents or even any other trusted adult, then I would ask basically just my friends. Well, um, it, it can happen to anyone. Um, I, I really am promoting um, contraception because um, our family has quite a few uh, teen births, unwed teen births, and I've seen the challenges and struggles of uh, teen mothers, also um, challenges with relationships with the families, with having a teen uh, that has a child without um, being married and with an absent um, you know, man involved. Um, it really hurts me to see children having children and so I definitely would recommend without a doubt that sex ed needs to be taught better and I feel especially um, I think they should teach more about having uh, a child when you're a child because I think it is a very very big burden I think it's very very challenging for the people that I've seen that have this um, lifestyle. Um, a lot of my friends actually do talk to their parents about sex, but of course it's mostly for a comical sense, and yeah. Why do you think it is that teens talk to their parents in a more comedic way than in a serious way about sex? Um, I think that teens talk to their parents in a more comedic way because um, everyone knows that laughing and joking is a perfect way to break tension and with someone that you've been growing up with your entire life you it's kind of hard to just one day start talking about 
um, such uncomfortable or forbidden subjects with your parents. So the best way to do that, if you do want to talk to your parents, is with a comical sense. Uh, yes, I remember that um, with Lexi, it was uh, when she was um, in seventh grade, and it was starting to do where more of the boys were kind of looking at the girls and more of the idea of dating was coming into school. And I sat down with her and I talked to her about it and, you know, explained to her that I wasn't ready for her to necessarily start dating, but that she may start to feel some of the pressures of that and that she could be able to communicate it with me. And I remember her getting all kind of shy and giggly about it and not comfortable. And I remember her sister listening at the door. So I had her younger sister come in and say, listen, if I'm going to explain it to her, and you're obviously going to ask and talk afterwards, I might as well explain it to you too as well. And now they're only about 18 months apart, so I sat down and talked with her then. And it was, it was not in depth, it was kind of more on a broad span, but enough that she could feel that hopefully she could come to me and ask me questions. Oh, I remember, I think it was eighth grade my mom came to my bedroom and started talking to me and telling me about like all this stuff about sex and like dating and started to explain all this stuff to me and it was like a lot to take in at one time because I didn't really I wasn't really interested in that kind of stuff I thought boys sold cooties and stuff and it was really hard for me to understand just because I'm like laughing and stuff and I didn't really take it that seriously. I think that with texting and the other forms of communication that they talk more amongst themselves about it and what's happening. Uh, still the same type of high school gossip that went on when I was in high school, but now instead of it being on a phone, it's more through internet access and through communications, again, on a phone type basis, on a cell phone. But uh, yeah, I would say um, I think it's a lot different on the way the communication and everything is. I think it has a big impact, actually, because in all the TV shows and magazines and books and all these different talk shows that we're hearing today, all these stars and celebrities having babies and getting pregnant without getting married or anything. I feel like people think that they can just do that now when it's totally different to them because they have so much money and they have a lot of people helping them and everything. Whereas a 16 year old who gets pregnant and thinks that she's going to be like one of these celebrities who are just having all these babies, it's not going to end up the same exact way for her as it is for them. How do you think your communication with your teen has impacted their choices? Um, I think it's impacted their choices as being good choices. I think they're looking at um, they look at dating differently. And I've always communicated with them that you know once they start dating because they're so excited to do it that once they do start dating that they have to understand that there will be a whole different level. It's not just what you see on TV of holding hands and kissing that. There's going to be a lot more that's going to be involved. And I think it helps them to make the decisions on who they choose to date. I think when they look at the character of a person, they know based on the way that person handles themselves and what they've heard about that person, if they would really want to date that person based on what they see. And that if they feel that going out with that particular person is going to require uh, a lot of pressure when it comes to sex, that they've made a decision not to get themselves involved. Um, I just think that teens just talk to their parents more, even if you're scared or you're really nervous or you think your parents won't like you anymore or think of you in a good way anymore, I think you should still talk to them because they can actually help you out a lot more than you think that they actually will. Instead of going to your friends, having your friends help you get like condoms and birth control and stuff like that, it's better to talk to your parents because they actually have the best interest at heart for you, no matter what. And I think that the communication between you and your parents should be a lot more open, even if you think you're really scared about it. Parents and teens would rather not talk about sex. It is awkward, it is uncomfortable, but it is also necessary. You've seen the parents and teens in this film. Talk about them. Use them as a jumping off point to start a conversation about sex.